In the next chapter, we have a story which the mother read out to the students in the ashram at Pondicherry. It is a very interesting story. It is the story of a pupil called Yusuf, a young Muslim boy who wanted to study as in the story of Satyakama Jabla. Before we hear the story, let us hear what the mother had to say about it. This evening, I am going to read to you a short story which seems quite instructive to me. It is a tale of ancient times, of what used to happen before there were printing presses and books, of the days when only the Guru or the initiate had the knowledge and gave it only to those he considered worthy of having it. And for him usually, to be worthy of it meant putting into practice what one had learnt. He gave you a truth and expected you to practice it. And when you had to put it into practice, he consented to give you another. Now things happen quite differently. Everybody and anybody can have a book, read it, write through and he is quite free to practice it or not as he pleases. This is all very well, but it creates a certain confusion in many minds. And people who have read many books think that it is enough and that all sorts of miraculous things must happen to them because they have read books and that they don't need to make the trouble of practicing. So they become impatient and say, how is it that although I have read all this, I am still just the same person, have the same difficulties, haven't achieved any realization. I very often hear remarks of this kind. They forget only one thing that they have obtained a knowledge, intellectual, mental knowledge, before having deserved it, that is before having put into practice what they have read, and that naturally there is a discrepancy between their state of consciousness and the ideas, the knowledge they can speak about at length, but which they haven't practiced. So it is for the impatient ones that I am going to read this story, to tell you how things happened in the days of the old, when one couldn't simply have a book and read it when one depended on the Guru or the initiate to obtain the knowledge which he alone had. He had received it from another Guru, another initiate and he transmitted it to you when he pleased, that is, when he found you worthy of having it. Now, let us hear this story. Once upon a time, there was a Mahatma who was a great ascetic and a great Pandit. He was honored by all, full of years and wisdom. His name was Junoom. Many young boys, many young men used to come to him to receive initiation. They stayed in his hermitage, became pundits themselves, then returned home after a long and studious retreat. One day a young man came to him. His name was Yusuf Hussain. The Mahatma agreed to let him stay without even asking who he was. Four years went by, thus until one morning Junoon sent for Yusuf and for the first time questioned him. Why have you come here? Without a second thought, Yusuf answered, to receive religious initiation. Junoon said nothing. He called a servant and asked him, Have you prepared the box as I asked you? Yes, master, it is there, quite ready. Bring it without further delay, said Junoon. With great care, the servant placed the box before the Mahatma. He took it and gave it to Yusuf. I have a friend who lives there on the banks of the river Nila. Go and take this box to him from me. But take good care, brother. Don't make any mistake on the way. Keep this box carefully with you and give it to the man whom it is for. When you come back, I shall give you initiation. Once again, the Mahatma repeated his advice and described the route Yusuf had to follow to reach the river Nila. Yusuf bowed down at his Guru's feet, took the box and started on his way. The retreat where the Mahatma's friend lived was quite far away and in those days there were no cars or railways. So Yusuf walked. He walked the whole morning, then came the afternoon. The heat was intense and radiated everywhere. He felt tired. So he sat down in the shade of an old tree by the roadside to rest a little. The box was very small. It was not locked. Besides, Yusuf had not even paid attention to it. His guru had told him to carry a box and he had started off without another word. But now, during the afternoon rest, Yusuf began to think. His mind was free to wander with nothing to occupy it. 
It would be very rare indeed if on such occasions some foolish idea did not cross the mind. Thus his eyes fell on the box. He began to look at it. A pretty little box. Why it does not seem to be locked? And how light it is? Is it possible that there is anything inside? So light. Perhaps it is empty. Yusuf stretched out his hand as though to open it. Suddenly he thought better of it. But no. Full or empty, whatever is in this box is not my concern. My guru asks me to deliver it to his friend, nothing more. And that's all that concerns me. I should not care about anything else. For some time Yusuf sat quietly, but his mind would not remain quiet. The box was still there before his eyes, a pretty little box. It seemed quite empty, he thought. What harm would there be in opening an empty box? If it had been locked, I would understand. That would be bad. A box which is not even locked, it can't be very serious. I'll just open it for a moment and then shut it again. Yusuf's thought round and round that box. It was impossible to detach himself from it. Impossible to control this idea that had crept into him. Let me see only a quick glance, just a glance. Once again he stretched out his hand, drew it back once more, then again sat still. All in vain. Finally Yusuf made up his mind and gently, very gently, he opened the box. Hardly had he opened it, then pfft, a little mouse jumped out and disappeared. The poor mouse, all stifled in the box, did not waste a second in leaping to freedom. Yusuf was bewildered. He opened his eyes wide and gazed and gazed. The box lay there empty. Then his heart started throbbing sadly. So the Mahatma had sent only a mouse, a tiny little mouse. And I couldn't even carry it safe and sound to an end. Indeed, I have committed a serious fault. What shall I do now? Yusuf was full of regrets, but there was nothing more to do now. In vain he went round the tree, in vain he looked up and down the road. The little mouse had actually fled. With a trembling hand, Yusuf closed the lid and in dismay resumed his journey. When he reached the river Nila and the house of his master's friend, Yusuf handed the Mahatma's present to him and waited silently in a corner because of the fault he had committed. This man was a great saint. He opened the box and immediately understood what had happened. Well, Yusuf, he said, turning to the young aspirant, so you have lost that mouse. Mahatma Junoon won't give you initiation, I am afraid, for in order to be worthy of the supreme knowledge, one must have a perfect mastery of one's mind. Your master clearly had some doubts about your willpower, that is why he restored to this little trick to put you to the test. And if you are not able to accomplish so insignificant a thing as to keep a little mouse in a box, how do you expect to keep great thoughts in your head, the true knowledge in your heart? Nothing is insignificant, Yusuf. Return to your master, learn steadiness of character, perseverance. Be worthy of trust so as to become one day the true disciple of that great soul. Crestfallen, Yusuf returned to Mahatma and confessed his fault. Yusuf, he said, you have lost a wonderful opportunity. I gave you a worthless mouse to take care of and you couldn't even do that. How then do you expect to keep the most precious of all treasures, the divine truth? For that must have self-control. Go and learn, learn to be master of your mind, for without that nothing great can be accomplished. Yusuf went away ashamed, head down, and from then on he had only one thought, to be master of himself. For years and years he made tireless efforts, he underwent a hard and difficult tapasya, and finally succeeded in becoming master of his nature. Then, full of confidence, Yusuf went back to his master. The Mahatma was overjoyed to see him again and find him ready. And this is how Yusuf received from Mahatma Junoon the great initiation. Many, many years went by. Yusuf grew in wisdom and mastery. He became one of the greatest and most exceptional saints of Islam.